Welcome back to Snippet Coder and we are back with a video and this is the 13th episode of our grocery app with the Flutter and the Node.js series. So in this video we are going to create the cart API and that cart API we are going to use in our next video that is for the Flutter application integration with the cart module. So before starting the video if you are new to our channel subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. Thank you. So first of all, we have to modify our existing middleware that is auth.js file and for that we have to go to our middleware folder and there we have auth.js file and from here we have to do some small modifications and first one here we have to do, we have to check here if not of token then from here we will return, here we have to write response dot status 403 and we have to send here message no token provided. And same we have to do here also if there will be error then from here we will return response dot status 401 and from here we will send the message send and here we have to pass the message here message that is unauthorized unauthorized here what we are doing we have just checking here if the token is not provided in any of the requests then we have to return the message here no token provided and here we are checking if that if there will be any error then we will just uh, response back to the user that is unauthorized that means the token is not valid and here last modification we have to do here in the request.user we have to just pass here user.data because in this format we are getting the data from our service So now let's move further and now we will create our model file. Here we have to go to the model folder. There we have to create new file and the name of the file will be card.model.js file. Here we have to import constant mongos is equal to require mongos. From here we will create constant cart is equal to mongos.model. Here we have to provide a name that is cart. The model name will be cart. Then here we have to provide the mongos.schema and from here we will just create our schema here first one is our user id and the type will be string then we have required true then we have our products and this will be our array and inside that we have product and the type will be mongos.schema.types.object id then we have the reference here and the reference will be product here that means it will be reference to our product model then we have the required that means it is required then we have our quantity here we have the type that will be number then we have required true after that we have to do the some modification in our to json also we will put it to json and here we will do some transformations here we have to put inside our curly brackets now we will do the formatting here and here we will do transform function then we have model and return here we will put return dot cart id is equal to return dot underscore id dot to string then we have to delete this id that is return dot underscore id then we have delete return dot double underscore v and this is also come in our response and here we have to remove it the comma and we have to replace it with our semicolon and after that we have to put a timestamp also timestamps true so our model file is ready so what we did here we have created one constant cart mongoose.model and that model name is cart and here we are just creating a schema here with the user id as a mandatory field after that we have the product sale so what we are doing here we are just mapping the user id with the, all the products of that particular user that has been added to that particular cart and here we have to inside the product we have that product id then we have the quantity here and this product is mapped with our reference to our product model then we have the quantity here that is of type number then we have the to json here we are just doing the transformation for our response which we are getting instead of showing the uh, underscore id we are just replacing it with our cart id and the cart id value will be the same of that id then we are just deleting this underscore id and the double underscore v that variables also coming over there in the response that we not required after that we are just creating a timestamp and from here we will just to our module dot exports is equal to cart so before moving to our service we have to add one new package that is async here and that we will use in our service dot js file that i will explain over there and here we have to add npm install async 
So if I go to the package.json file, here you can see we are getting that package has been added. So now we will go to a service folder and from here we will just create a new file that is cart.service.js file. So in this file we require to create three function that is add cart, then we have the remove then we have the get card, then we have the remove card items. So these three functions we required in this service. First of all, we have to import here constant cart is equal to require. And here we have to put the model path that is dot dot slash models slash card dot model. Then here we have to import our async here, which we have added the package async is equal to required async. So basically it will be used because in the user card model, we have the products in our array format. And for doing some modification over there, we require the async function with the help of that loop and all. Here we have to create the new function that is async function add cart. Here we have the params. Then we have the callback here. Here we will check if not of params dot user id then we will return here callback message we will return here user id required and then from here we will call this function card dot find one and we'll pass here user id params dot user id and it will check if there will be any existing card or not if not then it will add the data and here we have function then we have the error then here we have we are just providing the variable name as a card db model or you can say card db here we will check if any error then we will return here callback error return here else we will check here if card db is equal to null that means there is no existing card for that particular user then we, we have to create a variable here that is constant card model is equal to new of card and here we have user id and we will map it with our params dot user id then we have our products we will map it with our params dot products and from here we will just call cart model dot save dot then here we are getting the response and from here we will just return here callback null first parameter will be null and then the second we are just passing here the response which we are getting in the case of any error, we will just call a catch and here we have the error here and from here we will just return here callback error and here in the next condition, we will check here else if card db dot products dot length is equal to zero. That means the user card has is added over in the database, but there is no product over there might be the user has deleted all the product. So that's why there will be no any product over there. In that case, we have to handle here. We'll just call here card db dot products is equal to what of the products we are getting from the params dot product. We will map here. Then we will just call here card db dot save. It will just save those product in that particular card. And here we will return callback null and in the response we will just pass this cart model in the else condition here we will just use our function of async here async dot each series and here we have to just pass a params dot products because we are getting all the products here and here we will just call a function product async done variable name as async done and here what it is doing it is just doing that loop and all and here we will just create one variable let item index is equal to card db dot products find index and we will pass here p dot product is equal to this product dot product so if we go to our model file and here you will notice that we have that products as an array inside that we have that product and a quantity here and we are just checking here with that product id so we are just doing the looping here in the database card db dot product we are just checking and we are getting the index here on the basis of that product dot product here and here if item index is equal to minus one that means item is not found then we will just call here card db dot products dot push and 
we will add here product product dot product and the quantity we will pick from our product dot quantity then here we will just call here card db dot save async done in the else condition we will just call here card db dot products and we will just pass a item index dot quantity is equal to and here we will just increment the quantity whatever the quantity we are getting from our request and we will add those quantity in our existing quantity and here we will just call here card db dot products here we will just pass item index dot quantity plus product dot quantity and from here we will just call card db dot save and we will pass a async done and here inside the else condition we will just return here callback null as a error null and we will pass this card db here so our add cart function is ready so what we are doing here we have created a function here add cart we have that parameters and the callback here and here we are ju just checking here if the params dot user id is not found in the request then we will just call back here user id required after that we are just calling here card dot find one so what it will do it will just give us the result if there will be any existing card for that particular user if there will be any error we will just call back here the error in the else condition we are checking here if the card is null then we are just creating the card here on the basis of that user id and the products which we are getting in the request then we are just calling here cart model dot save on the basis of that whatever the data we are just getting here in the response we are just passing here in the error we are just call back our error here in the else condition we are checking here if the user cart is existing it is already there but there is no product over there then we are just appending here that cart db dot products is equal to params dot products and we are just calling here cart db dot save so this cart db is this one on the basis of that particular data which we are getting here in the else condition we are just calling here async dot each series on the basis of the params dot product whatever we are getting in the array and here we are just checking the item index so if in the request if we are getting any product and we are just checking on the in our database if that particular product is exist in that particular array or not if that is not exist we will just append that particular product with that card db dot products and we are just saving here in the else condition if we are getting any product already in the request which is already in our database then we are just appending that quantity you can say we are just increment the quantity on the basis of the whatever the quantity we are getting it will just increase the quantity on the basis of the existing and the new quantity then here we are just calling here card db dot save and here we are just returning here callback null card db so now let's move further and we will create one more function here we will create async function get card here we have params dot params and the callback here and from here we will just call card dot find one and from here we we are just calling a user id params dot user id and we have to populate also in the populate we have to make sure the products if we go to our card dot model here you can notice we have that products here we have to populate this product inside that also we are just using the reference for the product here and we have to make sure we are just getting these products and our data of this product also because in the database we are just saving the product id on the basis of that product id we have to return to the user with that particular product detail also inside the product also we have that category also and that also we we have to return to the user in the json and for that we have to just populate here and we have to pass here path that is products after that we have to populate once again and here because if you see here first we have to populate this product inside that we have the product here on the basis of that model of that product reference then here we have to put here path as a product product then we have the model here and we have to pass here product then we have the select here and we have to as the selected column and we will put here product name and we have to remove this comma we have to just put the space here then we have product price then we have product sale price then we have product image inside this product we have to populate a category also we will put here path as a category 
and here we have to pass the model here that is category and that we have to make sure the model name will be first letter will be uppercase and after that we have that select and we have to just pass here in the response we have to just show the category name only and we will put here category name if you want to show the category pick or the category id that also you can do by putting the name of that field also and after that we have to just get the response here and from here we will return callback null and here we have the response here in the catch we have the error here then from here we will return callback error so our function is ready so what we are doing here we have just created one function for the get card and here we are just calling a card.find1 and on the basis of that user id it will just give the data to us if there will be any data then here we are just doing the populate here and the populate is used for getting that reference or you can say that foreign tables which we have linked in our card table and that is the products here that is in the array inside the products we have that product model then inside the product model we have that category model also and we have to get all this data in our response then we have just passing the response here if we are getting any in the case of error we are just throwing the error here so now we will create our last function that is remove cart item and here we have async function remove cart item here we have params then we have the callback and here we have to call cart dot find one here we have user id params dot user id then we have the function error then we have the card db here we will check if error then we will do a callback error in the else we will check here if we are getting the params dot product id and params dot quantity then only we will proceed further else we will not here we have constant product id is equal to params dot product id then we have constant quantity is equal to params dot quantity and here we will check if card db dot products dot length is equal to zero then we will return here callback null and we will throw the message here card empty in the else condition we will just check here let item index is equal to card db dot products dot find index p p dot product is equal to product id and here we will check if item index is equal to minus one then we will return here callback null and we will throw the message here invalid product in the else condition we will check here if card db dot products item index dot quantity is equal to this quantity which we have just passing here then we will just remove here card db dot products dot splice and we will just pass the index here one it will just remove that data of that particular product from our products array in the else condition we will check here if the card db dot products item index dot quantity is more than quantity we will just call here card db dot products and we will pass here item index dot quantity is equal to card db dot products item index dot quantity minus quantity so what it will do it will just if the quantity which we are passing in our request is less than in in the quantity of that existing product in our database then it will just minus that quantity of the request from our database here in the else condition we'll just throw here callback message will be enter lower quantity and here we will just call here card db dot save here we have error card model and we will check here if any error then we will return here callback this error else we will just return here callback and the message we will pass here card updated so our remove card function is also ready so what we are doing here here we are just calling card dot find one and we are just passing a user id and here we are checking if there will be any error we are just 
returning here callback and from here we will return error callback so here we are just checking here if we are getting the product id and the quantity as a parameter in our request then only we will proceed and here we are just checking here if the card tv dot products dot length is equal to zero then we are just throwing the message here card empty in the else condition we are just checking here if the uh, getting the item index on the basis of that particular product id and we are just finding that the by calling here find index and here we are checking if the item index is equal to minus one then we are just returning here callback of invalid product so here we are just checking here if the quantity which we are sending in the request is matching with the existing quantity in our database then we are just removing that particular product from our array array in the else condition we are just checking here if the quantity which we are sending in the request is less than the quantity in our database then we are just minus or decrease our quantity on the basis of our existing quantity and the quantity which we are sending in the else condition we are just throwing the message here enter low quantity if the quantity is passing as a more than the existing quantity and then we are just calling a card db dot save and we are just saving the work cart and from here we have to just call here module dot exports is equal to add cart then we have our get cart then we have our remove cart item so our cart service is ready so now let's move further and we will create our controller file that is cart dot controller dot js file and for that we have to go to our controller folder there we have to create a new file that is cart dot controller dot js file here we have to import our service file that is constant cart service is equal to require dot dot slash services slash cart service here we have to create the first function export dot create is equal to request response next and this will be exports here we have to create the model here where model is equal to user id and this user id we have to get from our jwt token and for that we have to just go to over this function that is middleware odd.js and here you can notice we have that request with this data user dot data and we are just passing a request dot user so we are getting the all the user data on the basis of this token and all and here we have to call here request dot user dot user id then we have our products here that we will get from our request dot body dot products and from here we will just call a cart service dot add cart then we have the model here we have to pass here and then we have our error results and here we will check if any error we will return here next error and here we will call return response dot status 200 dot send and we have to pass here message success in the data we will just map with our result which we are getting so what we did here we are just created one model here with the user id that we are getting from our jwt token then we have the products that we are getting from our request dot body dot products then here we are just calling here cart service dot add cart and here we are checking if there will be any error then we are just throwing the error here in the else we are just returning a status 200 with that send request with with the send we are just passing a message and the data which we are getting from a database now we'll just copy this one and we will just paste here here we will change it to find find all and here we will change it to get cart and here we will just pass our user id and that also we will get from this request dot user dot user id and we will remove this model so rest of the things are same we are just passing a user id so if we go to our cart service and here you can see we required only user id in the get cart so now we will copy again this function and we will paste here and we will change it to delete in the model we have the user id then we have the product id here we will change it to product id then we have the quantity here we have that request dot body dot quantity 
and this function we will change it to remove cart item. So rest of the things are same. So now let's move further and we will modify our app.route. So here first of all we have to import here constant cart controller is equal to require here we have dot dot slash controllers slash cart controller then here we have to import constant authenticate authenticate token is equal to require and here we have dot dot slash middleware slash auth so now here we have to just pass here router dot post request here we have endpoint that is cart then here we have to pass this authenticate token then we have the cart controller dot create so what it will do it will just check here if we are getting this authenticate token then only this will page will be accessed or you can say this route will be accessed else it will just throw us the error of the unauthorized or if we not provide any token it will throw us the error of that token not provided if we have this one on the basis of that then only it will deal with this card page and all and we will copy again we will paste two times here we will change it to get request and here we will change it to find all this one we will change it to delete and here also we have deletes so our route file is also ready so now let's move further and now we will test our apis and let's see is it working or not So now we will test our application for that we have to just run our API and here we will put node.mon.js So here we are getting some error so let's see what the issue is So we are getting the error in our route.js file so let's see what the issue is So here we are getting the issue the issue seem to be in our auth token file and here we have to we have and here we have to go to our middleware dot auth and here we have the function name is authentication token but here we have just added that authenticate token so now we will just rename it to our authenticate token and from here we will export it to authenticate token so now we will go back there and now we are getting here database connected that means our api is working fine so now we will open our http rest client for testing the api so first of all we have to just execute our login api to get the token so that we can use our cart api and here we will click on click on the send request so here we are getting the token we will just copy this token now we will open the new request so here we have the request in the header we have the authorization and here we are we have to just pass the token here and here in the body we have to just pass the products here and here we have to pass the product id then we have the quantity here so this product id we can get by calling our product api now if i click on the send request first we have to just remove this token so that we can check if that jwt authorization is working or not now if i click on the send request here you can see we are getting no token provided so now if i pass this token and now here from here we will just remove the token if i here click on the send request again we are getting no token provided if i put any dummy token here you can see here we are getting a here unauthorized that means the token which we have provided is not match now we will provide a valid token and now if i click on a send request you can see here that we are getting a success here that means our add to cart api is working fine and the response we are getting a data we are getting here user id and we are getting all the product to that particular user here we have added you can see see here in the body we have added 50 quantity is 50 here in the product of second product we have passed the quantity 10 product p so now if i remove this product from here if i change the quantity of first product to 60 so what it will do it will append this quantity here you can see we are getting here 110 so that means our add to cart api is working fine so now let's call here get request also for getting all the cart here now if i this body is not required i will just click on the send request you can see here we are getting a data here so in the data you can notice we are getting here user id inside that we have just products here and the cart id and here if you see here inside the products we have product array and here you can see with the product we have that product id then we have our product name then we have our category name category id then we have our product sale price then we have the product name here so by default the id will become so that's why id is coming here in the code we have just we have just added a 
category name only but we are also getting the category id also because um, by default the id also come here then we are getting a sale price also product image we are getting we are getting the quantity here so now let's test the last api that is remove item and for that we have to just change here to delete and here we have to change it to product here and here we will change it to id so here we have 110 if i change it to 60 so what it will do it will minus this 60 quantity from the existing products so let's test if i click on a send request so this is giving us some error sort of error so let's see what the issue is so here we require product id and quantity so let's see if i lower the case of the first character so let's see is it working or not so now it is working so what it is giving it is giving us the cart updated so let's test the get request to see that the quantity is updated or not so here you can see we have the 50 so because we removed the 60 item that's why we have the balance of 50 quantity so now if i put 60 here and if i change it to delete request so we will get the error here enter the lower quantity because in the database we have the 50 quantity but here we have the 60 quantity we are sending now if i click on the if i change it to 50 and if we click on the send request it will de delete that particular product so now if i change it to get request and see here you can see that particular product has been deleted because we have deleted all the quantity from our database. So that's all in this video. We have just created an API for our add cart. Then we have our get cart. Then we have the remove cart items. So in the next video, we will integrate this API in our Flutter application. So I hope you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like, comment, share. I will come back soon with another awesome video. Thank you for watching the video.